First game from the set, and this one's definitely the easiest game from the set. Simple one layer sequencing. Took about three and a half minutes to do this one. Let's uh, take a look at the prompt. We have a concert given by six member band GKPS TV. Those are our game pieces. Jot those down, and uh, we're sequencing when they perform their solos. Game pieces, game board, one to one mapping. Uh, our first rule reads that G cannot be in four, so just G4 with a slash. Our next rule reads the percussionist performs a solo sometime before the keyboard player does. So uh, out of all those words, I'm actually only reading P and I'm reading before and I'm reading K like this. Our next rule is also very, very wordy, but I'm only reading K after K after the V and then K again, K before the G. And you see, we've already hooked uh, this this new rule up with this this old rule. So now we have one compound sequencing chain. Right, so we can call this uh, rule number two. And I'm just going to move this over to the side. That way we have a uh, space to deal with our last rule, rule number three, which, see, I'm going to go through the full logic lesson about how to convert rule number three into something comprehensible. But uh, really, ideally, because you've done so many games, um, this is such an old rule. It's a biconditional rule that when you read it, you should ideally immediately just know what it looks like, immediately understand that what it's doing, it's splitting our game board up into two game boards. But anyway, uh, like I said, uh, let's go through the full uh, logic of it, the full proof of it. So the first thing you got to notice is that what rule number three is doing, it's giving us uh, one thing, right? It's giving us one thing. This is the logic of it. One thing or another thing, but not both, right? But not both. So immediately you have to recognize that what this is doing for us right, is creating a biconditional. Or but not both is biconditional language. If it said A or B but not both, right, this is our forever apart biconditional. Right, this translates, just review your core uh, logic lessons if you don't understand this, but um, what, what this is doing, A or B, is that it translates an A by conditional B slash. Right, You get A and you don't get B. Right, I'll say that again. You get A, you get A, and this becomes an and. You don't get B. This drops away. Right, That's this. Or alternatively, what's the contrapositive? The contrapositive is that you get B, right? you get B by conditional, and you don't get A. So the contrapositive here will be you get B, this changes into an and, you don't get A, and this drops away. Right? This drops away, this changes into an and. Right? So that's it. It's, it's one or two, uh, one or the other of these two worlds. Right? So uh, now let's take a look at what it actually says, because it doesn't say A or B. So what it actually says is that uh, S is going to be after P, or S is going to be after T, but not both. Right? S after P, or S after T, but not both. So let's just translate this out into the biconditional. What does it mean? Well, one version of it is that S is after P, but then this is not happening, right? So we get A, but we don't get B. So, okay, what does that mean? That means we get A, S is now after P for sure, but then we don't get B. What does it mean not to get B? What does it mean for S not, not to be after T? Well, can they be stacked? No, this is a one layer sequencing game. Well, if S can't be after T and can't be stacked, S must be before T, right? It must be before T like this. Ah, okay, so that's one of our two worlds, right? This is the, I get this and I don't get this world. Now, alternatively, right? Alternatively, what could happen is that you get this instead. You get this instead. S is now after T and then you don't get this. Well, if you don't get the same deal, S and P cannot stack. If it, they cannot stack, S must be before P like, like this, right? So really rule number three, rule number three just breaks down into this thing or this thing. I hope I don't have to write, but not both because that would be super redundant. Right? You can see that if you get this, you don't get this. Right? So, you know, like I said, this is the full uh, proof of it, but hopefully just reading the, oh, S must be after P or after T, but not both. Hopefully reading that immediately, you just realize, oh, what's going on is S is getting sandwiched between PT, right? With a switch on top, right? S is getting sandwiched between PT with a switch on top. Well, if you want to not uh, visually represent the rule using a switch. If you want to get rid of the switch visually, then you just split it up into the, into the two uh, two possible worlds. So that's what I mean when I say, see, you kind of split your master game board up already, right? You don't have to. You could have just you could have kept it as one, just you know, right? Oh, rule number three, right? Rule number one, rule number two, and by the way, rule number three has a little switch on top. Or you don't have to. Or you could split the game board up into two worlds, right? So. That's what I did here, uh, split it up in two worlds. Now, if you split it up in two worlds, you got to remember with all of your sub game board splits, every time you split, your remainder rules apply to both worlds, right? Rules one and two now apply to this world and they apply to this world, right? So you have to, you have to make sure you do that. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me get rid of this for some more space. 
All right, so these are the two worlds that rule number three generated. Now we have to apply both of these rules to this world and then both of these to this world. This one, I'm not really sure how to do it yet, but this one over here, you see the P overlap, right? You see the P overlap over here. So P is now before, right? P is before K, which is before G like this, and K has a V before it, right? So that's, look, all six items, right? All six items are now accounted for in one master sequencing chain. And how does this rule apply? Well, if you look at G right now, G's got one, two, three items before it. So it can't be one, two, three like this. So according to just this rule alone, the earliest that G could be in is four and all the options for G are four, five, six. But what this rule does is it prevents G from being into four, which means it relegates it into five or six right? Five or six. So I'm not really sure what you want. You could just keep this here if you want, right? You could keep it here, right? Just realize, uh, you know, for this sub game board, oh, uh, there's still a rule that pertains. G cannot be in four. You could write it like this. Or alternatively, you could just put five slash six over here, right? Because that's where G could go. So I'm going to go with this because it's more compact. Everything is really together over here. Okay, so now let's apply uh, this rule and this rule to this sub game board, right? This one connects also with P. Right, P is now before K, before G, so that just links up right up here, before K like this, before uh, G like this, and of course V is before K like this. So this one, I think, I mean, I like this one way better because it just it's kind of just lines up, right? Immediately you can see who the supreme follower is, that's G. G follows everybody, right? G follows everybody, and so does K, right? So G has to be in 6, K has to be in 5, in which case V is actually a floater, right? You see it floats up, and TSP, of course, still have to uh, they have to play a sequencing game where T is before S before P, right? So that's it. We've, we've fully represented this rule. We've fully represented this rule. And we split our master game board up into two sub game boards. Let's take a look at the questions now. First question, standard acceptable situation question. Uh, just one caveat. You got to be a little careful. They do say keyboard player. And also there's a percussionist. So there are two piece. Uh, I know I've already reduced it to just the letters, but that's just, uh, you know, just got to be careful reading. Uh, okay. Anyway, so I took, um, where did I, I took the PKG rule. Right, PKG rule, which is that P before K before G, P before K before G. Uh, you start looking for that. P, G, K, no good. P, K, G is fine. P, K, G is fine. K first, G first, both no good. So then after that, I remember the uh, S sandwich between TP rule. That was our rule number three, S sandwich between TP rule, right? We, we've represented it uh, split up, but S has to get sandwiched. Over here, S is not sandwiched between T and P, no good. C is fine. Question two is a must be true question with an additional premise that P is before S. So see this P before S, what it does is just knocks us out of this world into this world where P is before S. So um, if you're really, really perceptive, and I, I didn't, I don't do this, but I've seen students do this. If you're really perceptive, you, you ask yourself, hmm, what's the difference between, uh, between this world and this world? Well, the difference is the sandwich, right? How does S get sandwiched between TP in this world? In this world, we're saying S is getting sandwiched this way, right? That's the difference. So must be true to ask for inferences. So this is the inference that we made, which means I'm going to look for an answer with PST in it, which gets you right over to answer choice D. P must be before T. Yup, P must be before T. So that's like the, wow, like the really high level, super quick way uh, to get this question right. That's not how I got this question right. Um, I just sort of brute forced my way down. Right, like A says P1, and I looked at this, I'm like, nope, P and V both could be leaders. Either could be one or two, right? Either could be one or two. So no good, no good. And by the way, if you don't realize why that is, uh, that's not a good sign. You're pretty illiterate in sequencing language. You really have to review uh, your core lessons, core logic games lessons on sequencing language, right? Like, this, this is not the time. Uh, VS, right? VS have no relationship. SK, SK have no relationship. Question three is a must be false except question. So immediately you translate into could be true. There's one answer choice. That's what we're looking for. Now, if you can't do this mechanically and in like a split second, you really have to review your core lessons on logic games, uh, question stems, because this is like the worst place to use your time, right? Like it's it's so trivial. This is incredibly trivial. Don't waste your time uh, on this translation. Just, you know, practice, anticipate this. All right. So we're looking for a could be true. Uh, let's take a look. K1, no way. K is not one. Uh, G2, no way, G is not going to be in 2. G before, see, this one, G before S, it doesn't happen here. Hopefully, it's very obvious that it doesn't happen here. But you might you might have actually thought, hmm, G, S have no relationship. So, yeah, maybe G before S, right? Yeah, okay, that's fine. That's fine if our master sequencing chain actually looked like this, right? But it doesn't. It looks like this. What is this, right? Do you remember what this? This was, we said, you know, if you didn't write this down, 
right, then you really should have had another rule over here that said G can't be in four. Right, so either you had this five slash six written down, or this is your whole set of rules. Right, so I think if this is your whole set of rules, you might have run into danger of forgetting to look at this one and then just going like, oh, G has no relationship, that's fine. But see, what's actually happening is that G has three items in front of it, right, already. So really, if you try to put G before S, right, and G, see here, G can't be in four, G can't be in four. So if you try to still put G before S, then you're, then you're kicking T off the board, right? T has to follow as you're kicking T off the board. That's why it's a contradiction. So anyway, it's pretty subtle. Um, hopefully, I don't know, hopefully you didn't fall for this one. Uh, G before P, this one, nope. And nope over here. And K before S is fine. K, S truly have no relationship. K could be before S or S could be before K. Question four wants to know who cannot be in uh, spot number three. So let's just run down our list. A says G. Uh, G is either in six or it's in five, six. So yeah, no way is it in three. Ace right, move on. Question five tells us new premise that uh, V is in four. So immediately write that down. And it's asking for a must be true except. So uh, you could translate this into the, uh, you know, could be false one. This is the right answer. But I don't know. I don't like could be false, right? So I don't want to do this. I mean, I guess you could if you uh, like could be false. If that speaks to you, that'd be really weird. But, you know, must be true speaks just fine to me. So I'm going to look for my four must be trues and then just bubble in the last one that's not a must be true. Okay, anyway, so if V is in four, look what happens. Uh, v4 kicks K into five, G into six for sure. And same over here, K is kicked into five, G is kicked into six. Uh, so these are definitely fixed. And then what's left in one, two, three? Well, it's just this. Look, it's just the sequencing chain and the sequencing chain, right? Which is just our rule number three, where S is in the middle and PT, they're doing a little trade-off, right? Sandwiching the S. So that's it. That's what happens. All right. So if you got this far, uh, then you could do this feel the force kind of thing, right? Where you realize four of these answers are fixed because four of them are must be trues. And this is very similar to that the same some kind of high level perception I talked about in question number two, right? And you realize that the right answer choice must be the movable answer choice, the thing that can move. Well, what can move? Well, these things move, right? P could be before T or T could be before P or uh, either one could be before S. Right, so if you realize that, you would have just straight looked for the E, right? Because it's got the T S. See all the others. See all the others are talking about V G. Well, V G, right? V G are followers. They're definitely following this entire set. Any of P S T is going to be leading V G, which is how they constructed A B C and D. Hi there, this is JY from Seven Sage. If you found this lesson helpful, then you'll probably also find our L R and R C lessons helpful as well. Uh, those are on sevensage.com. I hope to see you there.